Welcome to the Noonday Meditation with Wayne Vernon. Luke chapter 24 and the verse 49. I am sending you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. Having announced to his disciples their responsibility to proclaim his death, burial, and resurrection, beginning in the most hostile environment they ever experienced, our Lord then provides an amazing assurance for these brethren. I am going to send you what the Father has promised. The text could be rendered, I am going to send you what my Father has promised. Maybe a better reading. He said, I will do it. This is a personal commitment that Jesus has made to his followers. I am sending. Our Lord's choice of words here is interesting. Apostello is used here. To send out. Essentially on a mission. Just as the disciples were going to be sent out as ambassadors. So the Holy Spirit was going to be sent out. Essentially on a mission. I am sending. The promise that Jesus made to his disciples is a conversation that he had with them on multiple occasions. If at all they were paying attention, they would have remembered that he spoke often of the promise, the Father's promise. Here again, loved ones, the promise fulfillment theme of scripture is seen. What exactly is Jesus talking about though? The promise of the Father, that is, what my Father has promised, or the Holy Spirit, of which Christ is the authoritative dispenser, according to one writer. And John 14 and 7 confirms this. Among the many things that Jesus had told them about the coming of the Holy Spirit, he said to them in John 15, 25 to 27, that when the counselor comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. In Acts chapter 1 and the verse 4, the text says, But in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And Matthew 10, 19 to 20. But the Spirit of your Father will speak through you when you are arrested and you are not sure what to say. In John 14, um, I will give you another counselor who will be with you forever. You know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Amazing promises Jesus made to his disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit. In, in John 14 and the verse 25 to 27, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Brothers and sisters, Jesus assures his disciples that in a while, the Spirit would be poured out upon them in greater measure than ever. The promise which the Father has made to them through Jesus is that promise that was being discussed here. The promise was that they would be aided by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus is probably referring to Joel's uh, prophecy in Joel 2:28 to 29 which is reiterated in Acts chapter 2 16 to 21 where God promises that he would pour out his spirit upon all people your sons and your daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions even on my servants both men and women I will pour out my spirit in those days loved ones the task of being a witness of Jesus and for Jesus is an amazing responsibility. None should think that it is a walk in the park. We're all up against forces of darkness manifested in political leaders, hostile elements and anti-God God agendas. We do not need to walk around as if we're doing this on our own. We need divine accompaniment and we have been given divine accompaniment. We need to be reminded of the word of God. We need support when confronted by hostile persons. And more than anything else, we need divine ability to perform tasks that we are mandated to. We need the power to declare the gospel, but we also need power to confront the forces of darkness. Our Lord's commitment is that he would send the Holy Spirit and he has done so. Let us therefore draw close to him today and receive the promise made to us in faith, by faith. Remember that the reception of the Holy Spirit is by faith. At the point of conversion, the Holy Spirit takes up residence inside of us. But it is only as we open up ourselves to him and avail ourselves to him, will he be able to fulfill his work in our lives. I pray that today, as we listen to the word of God and read the word of God, we will avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We will submit and surrender to him so that he may use us for his honor and for his glory. Should you need further instructions in these matters, please feel free to text the number 647-696-0422. And if you desire to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please text the word salvation to this number as well. Someone is standing by to support you right now. If you have not yet secured your copy of my book, Six Practices of Effective Leadership, today is a good day to secure your copy on Amazon. The link is conveniently provided for you in the description below. If you're in Ontario, you can pick up your copy at the West Toronto Church of God at 1655 Wilson Avenue. And if you're in Jamaica, you could get your copy at the Montego Bay, Waltham Park, Sterling Castle, New Testament Churches of God as well as the bookshop at the head office of the New Testament Church of God located in Rodenspen, Old Harbor. We look forward to hearing from you how core leadership services may partner with you in your local church or organization to raise up leaders for greater and for future leadership responsibilities. Connect with us today and we would be delighted to journey with you in that regard. Well, I've been telling you about two amazing conferences that will be coming up at the West Toronto Church of God. Well, the first conference is going to happen this weekend, Heart Cry, with the Reverend Latoya Paul Downer. And this is going to be an amazing worship conference and worship experience. You don't want to miss Friday and Saturday of this week, the amazing Heart Cry worship conference. Tell someone about it and get registered today. We want to see all of you attending the conference. Also, at the end of the month, May 26, 27, 28, we're going to be celebrating Pentecost. It's going to be Pentecost weekend. Pentecost Sunday is May 28th this year, and we're going to be blessed by the presence of Bishop Tom Sturbins, who is going to be ministering during this weekend. And we look forward to a time of impartation and outpouring. You don't ever want to miss this. Please invite your family and friends and all those in your social network to be a part of this great experience. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 
Thank you for listening to the Noonday Meditation with Pastor Wayne Vernon. Please forward this study to your friends, your relatives, associates, neighbors, and all those persons in your social network. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to communicate with us and we will commit to supporting you in prayer. Until we meet again tomorrow, Shalom.